Hi guys and welcome back to Creative Pie Keeping. My name is Kasha. I am your host and in today's video I will show you the magic of all of the fish food that I feed my fish. I feed them a wide variety. I have a ton of food here. I recently ordered a ton more and that is mostly because I have a lot of fish at this point and I will be getting more fish so I have to have a lot to feed them. If you have just one or two bettas you might not need all this crazy nonsense. If you're breeding you might want this or you might want a different assortment. There is no perfect one way uh, to feed betta fish. So this is just a suggestion and that you may also explore, you know, other avenues, research what other breeders are doing and kind of observe and figure out what will work best for you. So before we even touch any of those, I'm quickly going to show you the frozen food and then I'm gonna put that back in the freezer so it doesn't thaw. I love frozen food because it is as close to live food as possible without uh, being live. Uh, definitely does lose some nutrients when it is frozen versus live, but it is a lot better than processed food. So if you can feed at least a little bit of frozen food, I really highly recommend it. Uh, first is the frozen bloodworms. I'm almost done. There's like a tiny bit left in here. I like to thaw these, just break off a piece thaw it in a, in a cup of um, water from the fish tank and then feed a lot of my adult and as well as breeding but as there are some smaller pieces on here that I will feed to larger fry so this is really awesome if you have just pet bettas and if you have like one or two you might actually want to get some of this stuff this will last you for a while you can only break off a little bit at a time but if you feed your betta this stuff two or three times a week this will be awesome. Your betta will be a lot healthier. If you want your fry to grow super fast, beef heart is the way to go. It is super protein rich. I actually just pop a cube inside of the tank and they will just nibble on an entire cube and eat everything and they, they love it. It's kind of getting a little frosty if you want to take a look at it. It's really great stuff. That is partially why I have some huge fry right now. The bigger, the biggest babies that you saw are because of this stuff. So if you want fast growth, this is the way to go. And then this is kind of optional. Uh, I feed this for fun. This is mice's shrimp. This um, is, I actually, I give this to all of my fish. My adult bettas will eat this as well. This is a kind of um, once or twice a week thing. This is better for uh, older fry, so I would say probably three or four months, depending on how big your fry is, but the very least four months old or higher because the pieces are a little bigger, so your little tiny ones won't be able to eat this stuff. Um, but this is awesome, so I am going to put these away. There's also a lot of other awesome frozen foods you can get. Um, like frozen cyclops, you can get frozen daphnia, you can get mixed food, but I have to put this away in the freezer because it's going to thaw, so I'll be right back. Before I show you the rest of the food, I also want to tell you that I feed a lot of baby brine shrimp. This is my little hatchery. I just bought it online. You could probably make a better one yourself, but that's kind of what I've been using. So I'm not hatching any baby brine shrimp at the moment, but they are amazing to feed your fry. Your other adult fish, adult bettas will actually eat baby brine shrimp. Guppies and endlers love that stuff. So your fish, community fish, as well as your bettas will really benefit from baby brine shrimp. And then over here is another live culture of food I have, and these are vinegar eels. They live in a apple uh, cider vinegar and water. A mixture half and half they have some apples at the bottom that they feed and as you can see they're really tiny they're considered microworms and they're perfect for feeding the first uh, few days of their life even I would say even the first week of their life I mean people consider feeding this stuff the first three days but I would even say you can go as far as feeding them for the first entire uh, week you can also grow a lot of other live cultures. Personally, I have not tried anything besides Daphnia, and with Daphnia, I kind of failed miserably, but I would definitely like to try some live foods. Live foods definitely help your fish grow 
the best. Your fish will grow fast. They will be healthy. It, it really encourages eating because they love to kind of chase and hunt after moving things. So it is definitely the way to go. So let's go back to the rest of the food that I have. Another good fry starter, at least worked out really well for me, was the New Life, Life Spectrum uh, Grow Fry Starter. It is really a powder food and it worked out really well feeding my fry in the first uh, week of their life, the first couple days. They like this stuff, so I like it. And if you're breeding, this might work out for you as well. This has been the holy grail at the moment. This is the Rapashi Superfood Spawn and Grow. It is a gel, so you mix this with uh, hot boiling water, it cools off, and then becomes this kind of gel formula that your fry can nibble on. This stuff was awesome, and I used it a ton, a ton to feed my fry, especially in the first two months of their lives. Some people make their own uh, food, gel food, so you can definitely look up your own recipes, but if you can't get this stuff, it's been lasting me quite a while. And they also have adult fish formulas and a couple other formulas. I also like feeding uh, freeze-dried blood worms, so if you have maybe one betta and you can't buy frozen food because it makes no sense to buy a whole frozen food packet for one fish, you can buy the freeze-dried blood worms and I would recommend feeding this stuff uh, twice a week. A lot of people say to use it as a treat once a week, but you, I would prefer uh, a little more often. I also get freeze-dried tube flex worms which are really awesome for feeding fry as well. So I've been using this stuff to feed my snails, mostly. But I've also started using it to feed my fry. I would leave some at the bottom and they, they can't eat it at first, but they'll nibble on it and they could eat it over time as it softens up. So this actually was some decent fry food, surprisingly. I like that it is uh, high in protein. I mean, if you look at the first ingredients, anchovy, shrimp, so it's got protein in it. Uh, I don't think it's that good for the price, but it has been lasting me quite a bit. And then this is the generic algae uh, wafers that I've been using to feed my endlers, guppies, my one pleco, and my snails. Uh, I don't think this is really good for the price either, but that's what I had at the moment. I did get a food that will probably be better than this that I'll show you in a little bit. Or actually, I can show you next. So I ordered a ton of food from uh, Ken's Fish because I keep buying these little piece like bags and containers of food and I keep running out and it's becoming kind of expensive now that I have more fish. And this is not sponsored. I paid for all of this myself. It actually was uh, fairly affordable. It was like $30 for all of this, and which sounds like a lot, but usually this stuff is like ends up being more than $30. Well, if I add this in here too, this stuff ends up being more than $30 for me if I wanted to buy this. So this is a good deal in my opinion, but not sponsored. But if you want to sponsor me and send me fish food in the future, please do. So one of the replacement foods that I got that I'll be feeding to my snails as I grow them out is the premium vegetable sticks with calcium. This is an added calcium. Snails need calcium to develop strong, healthy shells. So this will be awesome. I'm also going to be feeding uh, some of my uh, endlers as well as guppies this as well. I may or may not give this to my betta fry. If I do, it's going to be very sparingly because they don't really need this too much. I would just do it for giving them a, a tiny bit of variety, but that's about it. Now with these huge bags, uh, you don't want to open this bag and then just feed it from, feed the food from this bag. So keep opening this bag every time you want to reach in for your food because this means that your food will spoil faster as it comes into contact with air and the moisture in the air. So that is the downside of buying in bulk, but there are ways to get around this. So one way is uh, I take the container. So here's an Omega-1 container, which I was feeding my fish. I actually like this pellet 
these pellets for bettas, they're a good size. Uh, they float for a little bit and then they sink, so they're okay. And what I have been doing is I got some fish food, which is from also Ken's fish food, from Flora Aquatics, and I've been kind of mixing it in here. So there's three different formulas in here. And every time I feed, I open this up and I feed from here. So this is a smaller amount, and that way it'll keep everything else fresh. So I have some of this in here, and then I have another container that I am reusing. This used to be <clears throat> my Tubi Flex worm container, and now I put in the Tropical Flakes, which is the next food I will show you. I'm not a big fan of flake food per se, but it is good for feeding uh, fry. It is good for feeding guppies and endlers or if you have general uh, community fish so i always have some sort of decent flake and this is a half pound bag of flake food this is the kins premium tropical flake so it's kind of a generic community tank flake it has a variety of all the different types that they carry in here and i don't want to constantly be opening this because it will go bad a lot faster I only opened over here, actually left the rest sealed. I took some food, I labeled it right here, but it does not want to focus. Come on camera, there we go. So I labeled it right here, this was my Tubaflex container. And let me try to open it, must use my pajama pants to help me, there we go. So I used my Tubaflex warm container because it also has some silica gel in here, and the silica gel will absorb absorb any uh, moisture to help keep the food fresh. So every time I feed the fish, I actually use this. I don't even fill it all the way. I only put a little bit at a time. Because if you fill it all the way, all the food in here can go bad faster. So it's better to do just a little bit at a time and only be opening uh, this container versus having to open this all the time. So it's a good way to keep your food fresh longer hang on to your containers if you don't have containers you can use smaller ziploc bags to kind of portion out your food so to get to the last three that i got is i wanted a small fry food that will be bigger than the powder food but also smaller than the different flake I mean the the pellets that I have right now so I ended up giving it a go to try to uh, oh it's upside down to try out the Kent's premium growth meal at the zero zero size so if I can kind of zoom in over here and focus as you can see it's not yet a powder it is still um, a granule type food but it is very very tiny so you can feed a lot of different fry with this but at the same time it won't be you know like a powdery mist in your tank either so i think this will last me quite a bit and this will be great for my younger fry uh, as a supplement to uh, baby brine shrimp so they can have a little bit of a variety so i'm trying this out there are bigger sizes i think i might get um one larger size, a size to match the ones I have right now in here. So that might be a future goal. I also got the, if my camera decides to focus, Ken's Red Floating Betta Pellets. Uh, in certain uh, tanks, I do have a hard time feeding my adult bettas if the food doesn't float. So I wanted a good floating pellet. This is a decent size. As you can see, and it is color enhancing, so I will be using this to feed my largest fry as well as any of my adult uh, bettas, and this should probably last me forever. This is half pound. Actually, all of these bags that I've ordered have been half pound bags. You can buy more if you wanted to. I don't remember the prices exactly, and I kind of threw out the piece of paper with the prices. This is 1.8 ounces, and this stuff, like, itself cost me like seven or something bucks so I mean look at this this is much more economical especially if you're breeding you're feeding a lot of fish 
and you can't be spending a ton of money so this makes more sense to me at least and then the last food that I got is the Kent's multi worm uh, sticks these are the mini sticks I probably should have gotten the large sticks but I didn't really know how big the large ones were so I got the mini ones now I got them to be a replacement for uh, these guys I mean I still have to finish feeding this and I might for now uh, take some of these and mix them with these guys and just feed them together this is mostly made from different uh, worms so as you can see it says earthworms, bloodworms, silkworms, tubuflag, blackworms, and then plankton krill and all the other stuff. It's really heavy in different proteins and worms and bugs. So what I want to do is drop this, a few of these in the tank, and then the fry will nibble on these. Even your tiny fry will nibble on this. So this will definitely give your fish a greater variety. So this is my food apocalypse. This is probably going to last me a long time. And that's kind of it. Uh, not even focusing. Okay, there we go. This will probably last me a long time. You don't really need all of this if you're breeding or if you're keeping a lot of fish. Uh, look over your options and pick, you know, what will work best uh, for you. Try out different foods. That's what I've been using, doing. I've been trying out different things and kind of figuring out what's been working for me, what has not been working for me. I've noticed in my experience of keeping bettas for so many years that if you feed a betta one type of food uh, that betta won't do so well if you feed the betta a, a variety and it doesn't have to be a huge variety but if you make the effort to feed a couple different things your betta will do a lot better and if you feed frozen or live food your betta will do the best so in order of awesome to less you know live food is number one awesomest frozen food is number two and then these processed foods are uh, number three with obviously um, the frozen freeze-dried sorry yeah freeze-dried being better than the you know more processed foods but I hope that this kind of helps you get an idea into uh, what I feed and shows you different options more affordable options. I kind of really like Ken's food. I got introduced to it thanks to Floor Aquatics. He was the breeder that sent me the uh, koi female and I'm going to be sending him uh, a male as a swap. So he showed me the food. My fish have been loving their food so I'm really happy I've discovered this and I'm super super happy. And also as a bonus here's an adorable banana that passed out from playing with all her toys with a toy on top of her. And there's her friend Kona for pet sitting. Focus! Kona's a jindo. I don't know why my camera does not want to focus. Can you focus on the toy? There we go. Okay, I'll focus on the toy. But that's Kona. If you want to see more of Kona, I think I will be uh, doing some vlogs soon. Maybe at the end of the week. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe there'll be a banana show if anything cute happens. But look at this toy apocalypse. Is random and it's adorable. So I'll see you guys on Wednesday.